Do you use tiger penis for treating infertility? Today I thought I'd answer some questions on traditional Chinese medicine, and yes, that tiger, you know, was one of them that I got. We'll talk a little bit about my healing journey, how you can apply traditional Chinese medicine to your life, as well as some other questions that you have asked me. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and author of the health book, Master of the Day. And let's go. Question number one, what should everyone know about traditional Chinese medicine? You know, I think that depends a lot because there are lots of misconceptions, but for the people who have been treated by someone who practices Chinese medicine, it's pretty incredible what it can do. I think the main thing that I want people to know is that it is a staggeringly clinically effective medicine for treating both chronic health issues as well as really acute ones. I mean, my best mentors are treating pneumonia. They're treating very, very severe viral infections, even bacterial infections, right? But one thing I would say is that in my observation, both being sick as the patient and now seeing patients myself, is that there is a real alternative to lots of the medications that people are taking, just my observation. And there's evidence in the scientific literature as well that there are great options for women's health potentially instead of birth control, or for chronic migraines or chronic digestive issues, acid reflux, SIBO, bloating, for anxiety, for depression, for insomnia. So I think what I wish people knew is that traditional Chinese medicine is very clinically effective at treating those, and we get patients off those medications every single day in my practice. Just talked to someone yesterday, she had no clue that acupuncture could treat anxiety. So, exhibit A. My doctor has me on XYZ medication, but I want to get off. What do I do? Legally, my scope of practice means I can't really talk about your medications. But what I would say is, you could talk to your whoever prescribed that about your medications. One thing that I've seen we are very, very effective in my practice in getting people off of is upper GI medications for acid reflux, anxiety and depression, antidepressants, especially the low to moderate grade that the majority of people that come in are on. It's very, very common. In my experience, very easy to get people off of those, right, with very, very few side effects. And in six months, they're doing better than they ever were because there's no healing on medications, right? Migraine medications, insomnia medications, other related mood issues, birth control pills for irregular menses or very painful menses. I mean, the most severe ones I see are related to endometriosis and we still get amazing results with herbal medicine for endometriosis. So from my point of view, express those concerns with whoever gave you them and go see someone who actually treats these issues from an integrative point of view. We treat people in my practice all day long on medications. So we are very well trained to know exactly what to look for, what to expect. If they're tapering off with our primary care doc, how do we combine the two? Are there interactions? So find someone who knows what they're talking about in that regard. And most of the time, it's pretty easily doable. What can I do for a leaky gut from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view? This is a great question because gut problems are probably in the top three conditions that I see every single day. So difference in traditional Chinese medicine point of view versus even now naturopathic or functional medicine circles. Number one, you have to understand what your constitutional type is. And this is basically your genetic type. Some people are genetically more predisposed to certain gut issues, right? Acid reflux runs in the family more. Anxiety runs in the family more. More bloating, right? Some people have an IBS-like pattern that runs in families or a Crohn's colitis pattern where they get these flare-ups a couple times a year. Understanding what your constitution is, like your natural tendency, is very, very important because if you know, for example, you tend towards a lot of bloating, a lot of food allergies, and a lot of just general gut discomfort, there are practices you should be doing that may not be as useful for other people. If your gut is more sensitive, you're probably going to have to eat a more specialized diet or treat it a little bit more intensely than someone who doesn't have a sensitive gut who can eat Taco Bell every single day and they have a normal bowel movement the next day. So for example, I'm one of those people who's always had a temperamental gut my whole life. My mom is like that, my grandma's like that. It is obviously running through our genetic line. So what that means for me is, one, more than the average person, I just have to make sure to eat clean. And from a leaky gut point of view, in terms of how I treat it clinically, we use traditional Chinese medicine formulas. They work second to none. You don't have to dramatically change your diet if you're taking formulas because we're actively rebuilding the microbiome, healing up the mucous membranes, etc. But from a lifestyle point of view, the top few things that I see are eat what I call a low dampness diet. The foods that basically harm what we call the spleen, the stomach the most, are the ones that generate too much, basically the sugars. So too many carbs, too many starches, too much sugar, liquid carbs like beer, wine, sweet tea is another big one. Basically a very low carb diet for a short period of time is very, very effective for like SIBO like symptoms for lots of kinds of people. And also this is basically an anti-dampness diet as we call it in traditional Chinese medicine. So eating a very low carb diet for a period of time is often very, very 
helpful on top of taking these traditional Chinese medicine formulas. Now, if you guys actually aren't sure where your symptoms are coming from, whether it's leaky gut or something else, make sure you download that free root cause quiz. I've just put it together. It's a beautiful 10 to 12 page handout with a quiz for helping you suss out where your symptoms are coming from, from a traditional Chinese medicine diagnostic point of view. We also have like a whole list of videos related to that organ and that symptom that are all free that you can check out. So it'll point you back to videos you need to watch to get to the root cause, okay? Check it out right below the video. Why did you not go to normal medical school? This is a good question too. So when I was young, basically, I always assumed I was going to go into like some kind of in integrative medicine program. I didn't know if that was gonna be getting a traditional MD degree and then going into something integrative, or if I was gonna go right into something integrative off the bat. I thought, you know, when I was 18, I looked at these schools to be a naturopathic physician because the education is quite legitimate. I mean, in the states that naturopathic doctors are licensed, they can prescribe medications, right? They have the same scope as a medical doctor in those states. And they heavily focus on integrative or herbal therapies, for example, other kinds of therapeutic approaches. So I assumed that's always what I was going to do. But it was really my journey of getting sick. So it was really that journey of me in my early 20s, getting lots of GI issues, going through the medical specialist routes, and then realizing that while the doctors I saw were nice people, nothing they told me helped me, which was a little difficult because it produced some cognitive dissonance. Like, how could I honestly dedicate the next 10, 15 years of my life, energy and money to something that didn't help me for that issue that was causing me so much pain? And then here I am, I go see alternative or integrative providers and most weren't that helpful. But then I saw this acupuncturist who gave me a traditional herbal formula from traditional Chinese medicine and it knocked the results out of the park. And he had a super packed practice. There was no way I could become an MD with that much cognitive dissonance. Like it didn't help me for the main issue that I was struggling with. So why would I waste 10 years of my life when this other path also had an educational path? It's a four year doctoral program that I took in traditional Chinese medicine, but it felt a lot like fate in a way. Why does traditional Chinese medicine use endangered animal parts? Like for example, I read a news article about tiger penis. Well, I don't, I'm fresh out of tiger penis in my, uh, in my herbal closet here, my dispensary. So I don't know what to tell you. I've never actually seen one, but you do every now and then see these in the news, right? You see like some marketing story around traditional medicines utilizing exotic animal parts. And I get it because like in Asia, you see, for example, shark fin soup, right? Hong Kong. This is a delicacy. What's sad is that they'll even take the sharks, slice the dorsal fin, chuck them back in the ocean, and they'll just die. They'll do this by the tons because shark fin soup is some kind of weird delicacy with some purported abilities, right? This is not traditional Chinese medicine. This is like folk medicine meets, you know, just placebo effect, basically, right? Some of these traditional, you know, animal parts do possess benefits. Consuming the organs of, you know, male animals is done all over the world in traditional tribes because it's said to help with fertility. It may be true that they contain a lot of testosterone, right? Eating the testicles of an animal. But we don't in traditional Chinese medicine, and there aren't really that many exotic animal parts as you might think. In my program, there are no pangolin scales, there's no rhino horns, there's no tiger parts. None of that did we learn. Every now and then you get something exotic, like Back in the day, rhino horn was used. It probably has real benefits if people actually studied it from a from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view. But you remember like during COVID, there was this whole thing about, we got it from the wet market in Wuhan, right? Totally a marketing story because when it was revealed that it actually was a leak, this whole like, let's just blame it on the Chinese, right? It was perfect for the presidency at the time because they could use that as like a media manipulation. Oh, it's like those uncivilized Chinese eating bats out of the the freaking night market. When you look at the actual practice of it, day to day, especially practitioners in the US, licensed and trained in the US, are not using exotic parts, right? Like I'm certainly not. I hope that answers that. Some of that is like a traditional folk practice that is not really the same medical practitioners that went to a medical school, like we all did, right? A four year physical location with clinic shifts and everything. And some of it's just media manipulation, right? Like the whole Wuhan wet market thing. It was a carefully crafted media story to make people believe a certain thing and to tarnish like basically the Chinese because we have this whole war with, trade war with them. What I observe is when you see people talking about exotic animal parts like tiger penis, it's more often thrown at this disparagingly as opposed to it being really with some evidence behind it. All right guys, that's what I've got for the Q&A today. Let me take a final sip of this puar here. 
Don't forget, I see a limited number of new patients every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. You can always go to dralexheim.com forward slash clinic to reach out to my staff or there's a link right below in the bio here. And I also have a great related video on some of these questions right up here.